The series starts by introducing TOP Management, a group responsible for dealing with scandals and legal problems involving the MC Group family to keep the company's stock value steady. The leader of TOP Management is Han Ji Gug, a former judge who joined MC Group after her career as a judge didn't go as planned. One day, the head of MC Group, Mu Wang Pio, who is quite old, suddenly gets sick and is rushed to the hospital. The family keeps Wang Pio's illness a secret from the media so that his granddaughter, Mu Saki, who lives in America, doesn't find out about her grandfather's condition. At the same time, Suki is having a good time with her friends in New York, not really caring about her family. Her family purposely kept her away. But when she gets a message from an unknown number saying her grandfather is in the hospital, she quickly heads back to Korea. She's determined to return, even though she's been away for 15 years, and a lot of her family doesn't like her because she was her grandfather's favorite. When Suki finds out that MC Group will try to stop her from coming back, she tricks the company's people by swapping clothes with a lady at the airport. With her cleverness, she finally makes it back to Korea and visits her grandfather in the hospital, even though he's still unconscious. After seeing her grandfather, she goes home to meet her family. Her dad, Muchaldi, and her stepmom, a young so, don't seem too happy about her being back. Chul he even asks her to go back to America, but she decides to stay. On another occasion, Silky goes to a fancy store and gets into a situation. She defends a store worker who's treated badly by a celebrity named Choi Nari. When Jay Cook and her top management team hear about it, they hurry to the store to handle the problem and keep it from getting worse. When Jay Cook meets Silky and Nari, the celebrity seems to recognize Jay Cook. From this, Silky learns that Nari is the biological mother of her stepbrother named Mu Shojin. After leaving the store, Silky bumps into Ho Yundal, a lawyer who helped her before when Toppy Management was trying to stop her from seeing her grandfather in the hospital. She gets her phone number to Yundu, and she figures he's a smart lawyer from a regular family by his clothes. That night, Yundu hesitates to call Suki, but she surprises him by calling and asking to meet the next day. The next day, Suki asks Yundu to be her personal secretary and offers him a good salary. She wants him to find out who's been sending messages about her family from an unknown phone number. Yundu takes the job and meets his friend Oh, a police detective, to trace the number. But it turns out to be a disposable one, so they can't find the owner. On another day, Suki takes Yundu to the MC group office and introduces him as her personal secretary. Meanwhile, a guy named Cholmin protests on the MC group building's rooftop, demanding justice for his son's death. Ji Cook tries to make him stop by offering compensation, but she lies and Cholmin gets angrier. Yundu feels bad for Cholmin who seems less fortunate and wonders why TOP management always uses dirty tricks and doesn't listen to people's problems. This makes Suki upset with her family's company. She walks to the lobby, grabs a sandwich, and drives her car fast, crashing it into Chalmin's car. Everyone, including Chalmin, is shocked by Suki's behavior, especially when she asks Chalmin to report her to the police for the car damage. At the police station, Suki is talking to the police and she tells Cholmin to ask for a big compensation from her. Afterward, she leaves the police station and Yundu, who is with her for the car crash case, is quite impressed by how Suki handled Cholmin and the issues with MC Group. Later, Yundu meets Ji Cook to discuss his job contract as Suki's personal assistant. Ji Cook thinks Yundu is the right person to handle Suki. As Yundu reads the contract, he seems unsure about the new job. But when he sees the salary, he quickly accepts all the terms and searches for his pen to sign. However, he suddenly asks to use the restroom. While there, Yundu looks worried as he remembers a bad memory from his past, when his uncle got money from a mysterious woman who had the same pen as Ji Cook. This memory makes him more determined to join MC Group with a secret purpose. So Yundu quickly returns to Ji Cook's office to sign the contract. On the other hand, Silky is waiting for Wang Pio, who is still in the hospital hoping he wakes up soon because she misses her grandfather dearly. While waiting, she meets Wang Pio's lawyer, Mr. Yun, who has shares in the company as per Wang Pio's request to make Silky his heir. Silky briefly wonders if Yun is the one sending her secret information about Wang Pio's condition, but he denies ever sending her messages. Another day, Yundu visits the MC Group's pig family house to introduce himself as Silky's personal assistant. When Chiyoldi and other family members see Yundu's handsome and intelligent appearance, they are impressed by Suki's choice. She gets him a pen, saying it will make him look more professional. 
Surprisingly, the pen is actually a hidden listening device that Suki intentionally gave him to find out how Jade Cook and everyone else treats Yundu as her personal assistant. Later on, MC Group faces another problem when a viral video claims someone is a victim of MC Group's collaboration. Chiul D gets angry and tells Jade Cook to solve the issue within 24 hours. She immediately assigns Yoon do the task of finding the person in the video as soon as possible. Meanwhile, Ijama and others must create news that overshadows the protest and shifts public attention to positive news about MC Group. As Yundu struggles to find the person behind the video, he starts recognizing the background in the footage. He heads to a rooftop and realizes that the protester recorded the video from a hotel. Without wasting time, Yundu disguises himself as a hotel waiter to track down the man from the video and convince him to meet with MC Group to sort out his problems. After some effort, the man finally agrees, and Yundu takes him to meet Jikook. Unfortunately, Yundu becomes disappointed with MC Group once again when he sees how Jikook handles the situation by reporting the man for defamation without addressing the issues he faces because of MC Group. Meanwhile, to divert attention from the negative news about MC Group, Kyung and her colleagues create positive news about Mu Wanjun, the second son of the MC Group family, known for his loyalty and achievements. On the other hand, Soki secretly investigates her mother's death on Jairim and finds the name of a reporter who wrote extensively about the suspicions surrounding Jairim's death. This reporter still covers MC Group scandals to this day. Meanwhile, a man named Kim Bu Jai, who owns a news company, appears very frustrated because the news he wrote about the MC Group collaboration victim has disappeared, and the company's reputation has been restored according to the image top management created to cover up the scandal. A Wang Mi, who works under Bu Qi, tries to calm down her boss. On another occasion, Ji Cook suggests to Chiul He that Soki should be set up with Ju Taeyong, a prosecutor who is the son of senior prosecutor Ju Hyang Yi. When Soki hears this, she decides to go along with the arranged marriage to avoid arguments and any suspicions of wanting to lead MC Group. Soki starts looking into Taehyung, her potential partner, and recalls that his father handled Jae Rim's death case. During Sook, his first date with Taehyung at a restaurant the next day, she intentionally insults his profession as a prosecutor, implying that many prosecutors like him go after wealthy women for a lavish lifestyle. After making her statement, Sook-hee leaves the restaurant, leaving Taehyung feeling hurt and planning to teach her a lesson. Another day, Yundu accompanies Sookie to visit Jae Rim's grave and engage in other activities. As they are about to leave, several prosecutors accuse Sookie of drug abuse based on a report they received. Sookie, believing she's innocent, denies the accusation. Unfortunately, one of the prosecutors searches Sookie's bag and finds evidence of illegal drugs, forcing her to go to the prosecutor's office for questioning. Yundu quickly informs Jae Cook about Sookie's arrest and Gwangmai who has been following Suki since morning, manages to snap a photo of her arrest with the intention of writing a news story about MC Group's daughter. Meanwhile, Taehyung meets Suki in the interrogation room and is pleased with her arrest, thinking he has taught her a lesson for underestimating him. However, Suki insists on her innocence and is determined to prove she didn't use illegal drugs. When Yundu meets Suki after the interrogation, he's concerned that her refusal to admit guilt might lead to more complex problems. Suki is disappointed with Yundu for seemingly not believing in her and suspects that all the problems she's facing, including her arrest, might be traps set by Taehyung, especially after their rocky first date. She also starts to suspect Telpi management as the mastermind behind her arrest to give her family a reason to exile her abroad. At the MC group office, Ji Cook refuses to let Suki go, even though Childi asked her to do so to protect the company's reputation. Ji Cook says she wants to teach Suk he a lesson for her rude behavior on her recent date with Taehyung, which has caused Taehyung to start causing trouble for MC Group. Meanwhile, Wang Mai is frustrated with Buki for giving in to Kyung's persuasion from Telpi management to delete all the photos of Suki that she had worked hard to obtain. At the prosecutor's office after Suki's urine test comes back clean for illegal drugs, Yundu immediately asks for her release. Unfortunately, Ji Cook agrees with Taehyung's decision to keep Suk. He detained until she apologizes to Taehyung for her rude remarks. Suk, he refuses to apologize and insists on her innocence, even accepting the idea of going to prison. She asks Yundu to gather evidence to prove she's been framed. Despite pressure from Ji Cook to convince Suk to apologize, 
Yundu decides to help her. They discuss Silky's activities before her arrest, and when the prosecutor's office comes to take her to prison, she smiles confidently at Yundu. A few days later, Yundu remembers Wang Mai, who had followed Silky on the day of her arrest. He meets with the reporter to request some photos and videos she obtained. Luckily, Wang Mai still has copies of those photos and videos, which help Yundu discover that one of the boutique employees Sook he visited on the day of her arrest secretly placed something in her bag. Yundu rushes to the boutique to find the employee, but she's on leave and can't be contacted. Meanwhile, in prison, Sook he seems to fit in with the other inmates. She buys delicious food for everyone in her cell, making them happy. She also stands up against bully in prison, earning a reputation as a new hero in the facility. Returning to Yundu, who was on the hunt for the boutique employee seen in the video. It took him several days, but he finally tracked her down. He questioned her until he discovered that the person behind Suki's setup was Bak Su Jin, her brother-in-law's sister, who happened to be married to Wan Jun. Yundu confronted Su Jin to ask about her actions against Suki, but Su Jin acted casually, denying any wrongdoing towards her husband's younger sister. After meeting Su Jin, Yundu went to the prosecutor's office to meet with Tae Hyung and presented the video evidence he had found, showing how Silky was framed and sent to prison intentionally. Tae Hyung had no choice but to drop all the charges against Silky. She was overjoyed with Yundu's skill in securing her release. On another occasion, Yundu informed Ji Cook about Silky's release, which surprised her because she had previously asked him to make Silky apologize to Tae Hyung. Nevertheless, she admired Yundu's performance in uncovering the trap and was starting to recognize his ability to protect the MC group family. Back at home, Silky met with her eldest brother, Mu Wansu, who she felt was the only family member who truly cared about her. Wansu was a film director, but never considered to be the heir to the family business due to his lack of business skills. One day, with Yundu by her side, Silky visited the home of Kim Bok Soon, a longtime friend of Wang Pyo. Sook He's main reason for meeting with Bok Soon was to ask her for an investment because she needed additional funds to strengthen her position in MC Group. At first, Bok Soon underestimated Suki, but as she listened to all of Suki's ideas about MC Group, she started to see the resemblance between Suki and Wang Pio, who was still in a coma at the hospital. After their conversation, Suki bid farewell, hoping that Bok Soon would be willing to help her. Later on, Suki asked Yundu to accompany her to a field, where she invited him to run around. She did this when she had a lot on her mind. When dinner time came, Yundu took Silky to his father's restaurant, and seeing her enjoy the food so much, Yundu's father, Ho Chong Su, was pleased that someone else appreciated his cooking. He even said that Yundu was lucky to have met her. On another day, Chul He organized a ceremony to commemorate the 30th anniversary of his first wife, Che Rim's death. Although he and the others appeared to be sad, Silky realized that they were all just pretending. She also uncovered the shocking truth that Jay Rim had taken a drastic step when she couldn't accept the fact that Chuldi had a son with young Seo, who had become Suki's stepmother. During the event, Chuldi got angry when Neri, his mistress, showed up and wanted to be part of the ceremony. As a result, he decided to exclude Seo Jin from the event to maintain peace. During the dinner with the invited guests, Wang Pio, who was still in a coma, unexpectedly arrived in a wheelchair. He greeted everyone and announced that Suk he would be the sole heir to the MC group after his passing. If anything happened to Silky, all MC group shares would be donated to charity. This announcement shocked everyone and hurt Chiyoldi's feelings because he had desperately wanted an inheritance from his father. On the other hand, Silky was delighted because she finally got to see her grandfather after being exiled abroad by her family for 15 years. After the memorial event for Jay Rim's death, Silky met with her grandfather and learned that Chong the servant had been sending messages about her grandfather's condition while she was abroad. Chong, who had been taking care of her grandfather, was Wang Pio's trusted servant and had promised to protect Suki as the rightful heir of the MC group. Chong then provided information about him soon, a housemaid who was currently in prison, accused of murdering Jarim. Chong knew that Suki's return to Korea was not just about claiming MC group, but also about uncovering the truth behind Jarim's death. Following this meeting, Suki contacted Yundu and asked him to find out more about Im Soon. Yundu, after reading some information about the housemaid, was surprised because Im Soon was his long imprisoned mother. In the past, Yundu, an orphan, was raised by his mother, 
but after Im soon had to go to prison, he was then taken care of by an uncle who didn't care for him. Due to feeling miserable, Yum Yundu made a faithful decision, and he was rescued by Jiang Su by the riverbank. Jiang Su, who had just lost his son and wife, eventually adopted Yundu as his legal son. In the present, Yundu was shown heading to the police station to meet Detective Oh, and requested that they swap cars so he could secretly visit his mother in prison. Up until that point, Im Sun had always refused visits from anyone. But because Yundu claimed to be a representative of MC Group that day, she finally agreed to meet. Seeing her son visiting her, Im Sun cried because she was worried that MC Group might harm him and asked him not to deal with Ji Kook. That night, Yundu met with Detective Oh again and told him about his first meeting with his mother after she had been in prison for more than a decade. He planned to file for a ritual to clear his mother's name and mentioned that Soki had started looking for the truth about Jae Rim's death. The next day, Soki suddenly went to Yundu's house because she was upset that she couldn't reach him the day before. Yundu seemed uninterested in her complaints and asked her to find a taxi so they could go to the prison without being followed by the top management team. Upon arriving at the prison, she met him soon, and after their meeting, outside the prison, Yundu informed her about various things regarding Im Soon, including his belief that Im Soon did not kill Jae Rim. Sook, he became suspicious of how Yundu knew so much about Im Soon, and he eventually confessed that the woman she had just met was his biological mother. Sook, he was quite surprised and initially thought that Yundu had been approaching her for some ulterior motive. However, after hearing his explanations, she realized that they were both in similar positions, seeking justice for their respective mothers. Another day, Yundu and Soki teamed up with Buki and Wangma to hold an exclusive interview, hoping to gain public sympathy for Soki as the potential heir to MC Gru. Meanwhile, Jit Cook and her team worked hard to thwart Sook his efforts to secure shares, trying to prevent her from becoming the company's CEO in the board meeting. That evening, Yundu accompanied Suki as she practiced her speech for the upcoming shareholders' meeting. Unfortunately, the next morning, as Suki was getting ready to leave for the office to attend the shareholders' meeting, she had to deal with a patrol officer conducting a raid around her house. She was shocked to learn that she had been declared positive for alcohol consumption and realized that one of her family's servants had intentionally tampered with her morning drink. At the same time, the shareholders in the meeting room were in an uproar over an article about Suki's arrest for drunk driving. They were all upset with Suki's actions and ultimately refused to select her as the leader of MC Group. On the other hand, Yundu, upon learning about the news, rushed to the police station to inform them about the cancellation of Suki's appointment as the CEO of MC Group. He also tried to clear her name by presenting evidence related to Suki's condition, which caused her body to produce alcohol from every carbohydrate she consumed. Meanwhile, the negative news about Suki in the media had a negative impact on Wang Pio's health, while Chiu He and Young Seo celebrated Suki's failure because Chiu He remained the CEO of MC Group. As for Wan Su, he was trying to arrange a meeting between Seo Jin and Neri so that his younger brother could spend some time with his biological mother. Wan Su and Neri seem to have a close relationship, having once worked together on a film project and even been romantically involved. Unfortunately, Neri, who desired to become the CEO's wife at MC Group, had ended her relationship with Wan Su and gotten closer to Chiuli, resulting in the birth of Seo Jin. Meanwhile, Yundu invited Suki to enjoy the fresh air by the riverside to help her relax and ease her mind after all the troubles of the day. She also visited Wang Pio and expressed her guilt for going against her grandfather's wishes, who had wanted her to inherit all of MC Group's wealth. Yundu, still concerned about Suki's well-being, contacted her to ask if she had read the book he had given her earlier, hoping it might make her feel better. Another day, Wang Pio instructed Yun to file a lawsuit against TOP management, accusing them of coercing shareholders into rejecting Suki as the new CEO of MC Group. He also had a direct conversation with Chiuldi, firmly demanding that his son approve Suki's appointment as the CEO of MC Group. He reminded Chiuldi that the company and the house belonged to him, so Chiuldi had no right to refuse his orders. Although Chiuldi was frustrated by his father's request, he couldn't go against Wang Pio's will, especially considering Wang Pio favored Suki over him. On another occasion, Ji Cook met with Chiuldi and assured him that she would handle the issue as she didn't want MC Group to be led by someone she believed was incapable of managing the company. She then met with Suki 
and asked her to give up her pursuit of the leadership position in the company. But Sucky firmly rejected Ji Cook's request and remained unafraid of the threats Ji Cook made. That evening, Silky and Wang Pio invited all the company's shareholders to persuade them that Silky was capable of leading the company, hoping for their support. After reading the proposal Yundu had prepared about Silky and her vision for the company, the board members were quite impressed and agreed to support her, which made Wang Pio happy. They all enjoyed a delicious meal that night. However, Wang Pio received a call from Ji Cook, who reported something that shocked him and led to a heart attack. Everyone was in panic and saddened to hear that Wang Pio had passed away. Ji Cook, on the other hand, seemed calm because she had been communicating with the MC Group family's personal doctor about Wang Pio's medical history all along. With information about the foods Wang Pio couldn't consume and his excessive stress due to the shocking news, Ji Cook took the opportunity to deliver the surprising news that led to the MC Group's leader's passing. Some time after Wang Pio's death, a simple meal was held at the suggestion of Ji Cook as she felt it would be inappropriate to have an extravagant funeral, given the negative news surrounding Suki after her scandal. Suki, who attended the funeral, was deeply affected by her grandfather's death, as he had always been her sole support in the family. Not long after Wang Pio's death, Ji Cook promptly dismissed Yun as the MC group's personal lawyer and Chong as the family servant. Ji Cook also offered Yun to a position in the core top management team which he welcomed because he needed access to retrieve his mother's case files that Ji Cook had hidden. On another occasion, Ji Cook met with Suki again and asked her to return to America, but Suki firmly refused Ji Cook's request because she preferred to seek justice for all the people who had taken the lives of her loved ones. Before leaving her father's office, she was chewing gum and deliberately threw it into young Sio's fish tank. So in the middle of the night, Chiulhi's residence was shocked by the death of Picasso, young Sio's beloved goldfish in the aquarium. Everyone panicked and even Yundu had to prepare to go to the MC Group family's residence to assist with the arrangements for young Sio's petfish's burial. The next morning, they held an extravagant funeral for Picasso, which upset Suki because it seemed more elaborate than her grandfather's funeral. She wore a bold red dress to the funeral, surprising everyone. She tossed a rose into the pond and left clapping her hands mockingly at the death of her stepmother's beloved pet. A few days later, Chiuldi seemed to meet with Ji Cook and asked her to expedite the selection of Wan Jun as the new CEO, whom he had prepared to replace him. Ji Cook thought it was too rushed because she believed Chiuldi's three children were not yet ready to lead MC Group. After that meeting, Chiuldi summoned Wan Jun to discuss his future as the company's leader. He proudly told his son that he had chosen him as his successor. But when Wan Jun got home, he seemed troubled by his father's request for him to become the CEO. He appeared almost in tears in the restroom, while tearing up a plane ticket to France, as if he had a secret he was hiding from everyone. On another day, Ji Cook invited Wan Jun to dinner, because she wanted to make sure Chiul He's second son was truly capable of leading MC Group. When they discussed the company, Wan Jun could explain things well. But he became uncomfortable when Ji Cook brought up his marriage. He confessed that he hadn't been intimate with his wife for nearly five years. Hearing this, Ji Cook started to suspect that Wan Jun was hiding something. On another occasion, she began investigating Wan Jun and obtained surveillance camera footage from an apartment building showing Chiul He's second son frequently visiting the apartment with a woman. During a meeting with her team, Ji Cook, realizing that Wan Jun might have an extramarital affair, planned to arrange his divorce before he became the head of MC Group. This was to avoid higher compensation demands from Su Jin if the divorce happened after Wan Jun assumed leadership of MC Group. That evening, Yundu met Suki at a bar to discuss the information they had gathered for their upcoming plans. Suki, after Wang Pio's death, intentionally acted as if she didn't care about the family business, making herself seem like an inexperienced heir. This made it easier for her to execute her plan. She also enjoyed her newfound freedom and picked up Siu Jin from school so her stepbrother could spend time with Neri without interference from top management. Silky also secretly advised Neri and Su Jin to resist top management's offers to buy their shares. Another day, Silky persuaded Wan Su not to give his shares to Wan Jun, as she believed he wouldn't be willing to help anyone, including his siblings, once he officially became the head of MC Group. On a different occasion, Yun Du and Silky returned to the prison to visit M Soon without realizing that someone was secretly following and taking photos of them from a distance. 
During their meeting with Imsoon, she mentioned Jae Rim's dependency on a prescription pill from Dr. Saul. Usually, Jae Rim would experience dizziness and emotional instability if Young Seo didn't provide her with the medication. After hearing this, Yundu and Suki started investigating Dr. Saul and her connection to Young's to determine if they had any ill intentions toward Jae Rim. Switching to one of the top management members named Kwon Jun Yak, Ji Kook instructed him to gather information about Yundu. He met with Jang Su's friend, who shared some surprising details. The friend revealed that Jang Su's wife and son had died in an accident. However, he couldn't understand why Jang Su had only registered his wife's death and then moved to another area the boy he claimed as his son. Jun Huk wasted no time and reported this information to Ji Kook. The following day, Ji Kook called Yundu and asked if he was Jang Su's biological son. Yundu was momentarily puzzled but explained that he was Jang Su's adopted son. He had been found unconscious by the riverside, and he had no memory of his past. Ji Kook seemed to believe Yundu and no longer had doubts about him. At the news office, Wang Mai showed Buki several photos she had taken while following Suki and Yundu to the prison. She wanted to know who the people they met inside the prison were. Soon after, Kyung unexpectedly arrived at the news office and handed Buki an exclusive story about Neri's illegitimate child. Top management wanted Buki to create a viral news story about the celebrity child, but without revealing the identity of the child's father. Their goal was to remove Neri from the MC group family's life. As the news about Neri's illegitimate child began to spread, the public grew curious about the rising celebrity's secret. Meanwhile, Suki felt let down by her family once again, seeing how they were sacrificing someone else for their own gain. She rushed home from the gym when she saw Seojin in tears, fearing that her family would send him abroad. Suki tried to comfort her younger brother while brainstorming ways to prevent her family from exiling him. The next day, there was a commotion in the top management team when Suki intentionally conducted a live interview. Her goal was to reveal that Chiulhi was the biological father of Neri's child, challenging Jay Cook, who she believed had started a war with her. Ji Cook appeared quite annoyed with Suki's actions, which often disrupted her plans. On the other hand, Yunu quickly pulled Suki aside after the interview and asked why she had done something so reckless. Suki explained that she didn't want her stepbrother to suffer the same fate she did when her family had exiled her abroad for years. To counter Suki's interview, Ji Cook organized a press conference where Wan Su revealed that he was the biological father of Neri's child, contradicting Suk, his previous claim that it was Chiuli. This unexpected revelation came after Ji Cook made a tempting offer to finance Wan Su's film project and increase his share of the company. Wan Su finally made a public statement about Neri's situation. With the Neri issue seemingly resolved, Ji Cook had new plans to remove Su Jin from the picture. She sent a family chef to seduce Wan Jun's wife. On another occasion, she aimed to sabotage the company's inheritance policy. She set up a situation where she recorded board members in a compromising position at a bar. With this recording that could ruin their reputations, the board members reluctantly agreed not to approve the company policy. Ji Cook and Chiul He were thrilled with the success of their plans. Meanwhile, Yun Du sat alone at a bus stop, feeling disappointed in himself for becoming more like the other Telpi management employees who were willing to do whatever it took to achieve their goals, even if it meant harming others. Suki so tried to console him, and when she touched his face, Yun Du's heart started racing. On another occasion, Suki so and Yun Du visited Dr. Saul at a hospital to uncover the truth about the medication prescribed for Jerem. Dr. Saul, presented with various evidence, revealed that young Seo had asked her to get Jay Rim addicted to drugs, so she prescribed the medication to Jay Rim. During a family dinner, Silky surprised everyone by inviting Neri to join them. Young Seo, not happy with Neri's presence, didn't want any competition for her position as the lady of the MC group family. Neri apologized to Chiul He for showing up unannounced, explaining that she had nowhere to go after her career was ruined by the MC group scandal. Young Seo, who was Wan Jun's mistress, was furious and disagreed with Neri's request. Neri didn't seem to care and left Chiul He's room, seemingly trying to make Young Seo jealous. In the meantime, trouble was brewing in Wan Jun and Su Jin's marriage after she found photos of another woman visiting his secret apartment. Su Jin expressed her disappointment and realized that Wan Jun had been in love with another woman, which explained why he had never shown any affection to her since their marriage several years ago. 
At the news office, Wang Mai, while looking at Yundu's photos, had a strange feeling of familiarity. She dug deeper into it and found a teenage photo of Yundu that looked remarkably similar to her middle school friend, Tiho. Meanwhile, Yundu was busy with a task from Chi Cook, investigating the past relationship between Wan Su and Neri. After collecting various information and evidence, he discovered that they had been romantically involved. However, when he reported this to Chi Cook, Yundu intentionally concealed the evidence and told her that Wan Su and Neri had never had a romantic relationship, contradicting Ji Cook's suspicions. Ji Cook wasn't quick to believe Yundu's report and asked Jun Huk to double check whether Wan Su and Neri had indeed been in a secret relationship. Eventually, she gathered enough evidence to confirm their affair. With this newfound proof, Ji Cook confronted Neri and ordered her to go abroad with Siu Jin. Feeling despondent, Nirai returned home and confided in Suki, recounting Ji Cook's harsh treatment. Suk, he placed the blame on Yundu, believing that he had played a part in TOP management's underhanded tactics to get rid of Neri. After their conversation, she left Yundu in silence. On another occasion, Suk he ran into Ji Cook, who informed her that Yundu had actually tried to protect Neri by hiding evidence of her past relationship with Wan Su. Hearing this, Suk he felt guilty for accusing him. And as an apology, she went to a boutique and bought a suit set for him. Yundu, upon receiving the thoughtful gift from Suki, was pleased and decided to express his gratitude by ordering some food and having it delivered to her. Suki smiled upon receiving the box of food from her personal assistant. Another day, Suki was surprised to see Yundu wearing the suit she had gifted him when she went to take Neri and Siu Jin to the airport for their exile. During the journey, Siu Jin seemed happy even though he and Neri were headed to Laos, as he was thrilled to stay with his biological mother. Suk he felt relieved seeing her stepbrother unburdened by his exile. Before heading to the airport, Yundu invited Neri and Siu Jin to visit Jiang Su's restaurant, because his father was a big fan of Neri. The simple farewell party brought joy to Neri, Siu Jin, and Jiang Su, who proudly took photos with his favorite celebrity, and even asked his son and Suk he to join in the pictures. Meanwhile, at the MC Group office, the shareholders praised Wan Jun, who was said to take over Chul He's position as the CEO of the company. However, Ji Cook still had some reservations about Wan Jun, feeling uncertain about whether Chul He's second son was truly capable of leading MC Group into the future. Some time later, Ji Cook resumed her plan to facilitate the divorce between Wan Jun and Su Jin, using photos as evidence of Su Jin's affair with the seductive chef. Feeling trapped, Su Chen finally agreed to divorce her husband and blamed him for never loving her or being intimate with her since the beginning of their marriage. Shortly afterward, Su Jin began packing her belongings and bid farewell to Suki, expressing that she didn't feel sadness about the divorce because it meant she could leave the house that had caused her so much misery. She also thanked Suki for always supporting her, unlike many other family members who had always cornered her. The next day, Suki took Su Jin to the hospital for an examination to prove Su Jin's virginity. With the test results in hand, Su Jin confidently met with Ji Cook and presented the evidence that she had never been intimate with Wan Jun. She explained her intention to use this evidence in their divorce case to secure a favorable ruling from the court. Ji Cook had no choice but to agree to the substantial compensation amount Su Jin desired. Su Jin felt proud of herself for adhering to her principle of remaining faithful to her lawful husband even when she had gone on a date with the chef in the past. In the evening, armed with the evidence of Su Jin's virginity, Ji Cook began to doubt Wan Jun's claim that he had slept with his wife at the start of their marriage. She initiated an investigation to uncover why Wan Jun had lied to her. Meanwhile, at the news office, Guang Mei finally found evidence confirming that Yun Du and Ti Ho were the same person. She contacted Yun Du and asked him to meet her at her office. Yu Nu hurried to the news office and in front of Bu Kiri and Guang Mai, confessed that he was indeed Ti Ho, Guang Mei's middle school friend. He recounted the events from 15 years ago and explained his reasons for joining MC Group, which were to seek justice for his mother, who had been wrongfully accused in Jae Rim's death. Bu Ki, upon hearing Yu Nu's story, revealed his own desire to uncover the truth about the MC Group family's case in the past, and after meeting Yu Nu, wanted to revisit his previous investigations. With their shared goals, Yundu and Guki decided to work together to uncover the truth about J. Rim's death. In the evening, Yundu met with Suki, 
who wanted to investigate Wan Jun's mistress and hoped to find something about her brother to use against young Seo. Without wasting any time, the two of them rushed to Wan Jun's secret apartment to start surveillance on his mistress. When they met the woman, she told them the truth about what had actually happened and even invited Suki and Yundu into the apartment because she was worried that Suki might involve the police. Upon entering the apartment, both Yundu and Suki were shocked and could hardly believe what they saw. They discovered that Wan Jun had a secret hobby of dressing up like a woman, with various women's clothing and makeup neatly arranged. On the other hand, Ji Cook had also uncovered Wan Jun's hidden side and showed him various pieces of evidence she had collected. This made him worried because she had learned his true identity. Nevertheless, Ji Cook felt that she had no choice but to continue supporting Wan Jun as the future successor of MC Group. So she decided to keep this information secret from all the MC Group family members. Meanwhile, Lu Qi called Yundu and Suki to reveal something he had kept secret for 15 years. When everyone gathered, Buki showed them surveillance camera footage from the villa where J Rim had stayed before her death. The recording had been deleted by the family, so Im Soon couldn't offer any resistance to refute the murder allegations against J Rim. In the footage, they saw all the family members taking turns visiting the villa on the day of J Rim's death, leading Suki to become suspicious of everyone recorded in the surveillance camera. Meanwhile, Yundu became more convinced that his mother had been lured to the villa when J Rim was already deceased. When Suki arrived home, she greeted Wan Jun and showed him the hat and shoes she had brought back from her brother's secret apartment. She mentioned that she had discovered all of Wan Jun's hidden secrets. Wan Jun appeared to be trying to stay calm and decided to leave Suki's room. Before he left, she asked if he had gone to the villa on the day of J Rim's death, and he replied that he hadn't gone there that day before walking away. Outside his sister's room, Wan Jun displayed his frustration, which caught the attention of Wan Su. He quickly went inside to talk to Suki and asked why Wan Jun seemed angry after leaving her room. Suki then asked Wan Su to examine the shoes and hat on her table and provided the address of Wan Jun's secret apartment, including the entry code. The next day, Ji Cook met with Chul He to request the expedited appointment of Wan Jun as the CEO of MC Group. Without suspecting anything, Chul He approved Ji Cook's request. Meanwhile, Suki met Yundu to show him a photo from her mother's phone which accidentally captured Wan Jun dressed as a woman while he was abroad for an exhibition. She felt confident that her mother had become aware of her stepbrother's hidden side. At home, Young Seo once again complained about Wan Su, who she considered useless and unworthy of being a member of the MC group family. Although he remained silent, Wan Su, hearing his mother continuously belittling him, felt hurt and frustrated at being treated unfairly. During a family meal, Wan Su, who had learned Wan Jun's secret, showed pictures of his younger brother, dressed as a woman to Chiul He and Young Seo. Both of them appeared shocked, especially Chiul He, who felt disappointed. He had always regarded Wan Jun as his perfect son and a true man. At that moment, Wan Jun refused to be blamed by his father and instead asked his father to accept his true self. After finishing the meal, Young Seo met with Wan Jun in his room and tried to comfort her second son. She revealed that she had actually noticed Wan Jun's differences since childhood, such as his preference for her clothes. She even knew that her son had secretly taken her clothes from her room, but she had always tried to convince herself that Wan Jun was a normal man like the others and never suspected that a day like this would come. Nevertheless, Young Seo expressed her determination to ensure that her second son would still become the next leader of MC Group. After her mother left, Wan Jun appeared distressed by everything that had happened to him. At the office, Chiul He immediately called Ji Cook to cancel the appointment of Wan Jun as the next CEO of MC Group after being disappointed with his second son. Ji Cook then revealed that she had also learned about Wan Jun's secret and refused to follow Chiul He's orders because she was determined to make Wan Jun the leader of the company. When she returned to the top management office, she asked her team to resolve the issue of Wan Jun and continue to consider him as the future leader of MC Group disregarding the dissenting voices of its members. In the evening, Yundu and his secret team were also planning to locate Judge Lee, who had been concealed by MC Group after presiding over Im Soon's trial 15 years ago. Suk He revealed that she would search for Judge Lee, even if she had to go to America to find him. On another occasion, Chong secretly went to Jiang Su's tavern to meet Yundu. At that time, Yundu informed her that Suk He was still trying to uncover the truth about Jae Rim's death. 
Chong wondered why Yundu was willing to help Suki, especially since he had joined Tok Management. He then revealed to Chong that he believed in his true identity as Im Soon's son and his goal of seeking justice for his mother, who had been falsely accused in Jae Rim's death. Chong was visibly surprised to hear this because, for a long time, she had been searching for Im Soon's son. According to her confession, Chong and Im Soon were close friends when they were both servants of the MC group. Chong then handed over the court documents of Im Soon's case that she had kept since she had located Judge Lee some time ago. With these documents in hand, Yundu gathered his team to study the files provided by Chong and began searching for evidence and the actual culprits who had killed Jerem. During a family meal, Chul He still appeared very angry and resentful towards his second son, whom he considered immoral. However, in the office, Ji Cook remained determined and insisted on making Wan Jun the next leader of MC Group. She then crafted a story to build Wan Jun's image, deliberately showing all the photos of Wan Jun dressed as a woman to the public. She arranged for a clarification from him, stating that these photos were taken while he was participating in a transgender-themed film casting made by his friend. She also mentioned that if there were future photos of him in women's clothing, they would be solely for the purpose of his friend's film. With this clarification, the public came to believe that Wan Jun was a genuine man. While watching the interview program, Wan Su felt annoyed and disappointed by his younger brother's lies, supported by Jae Cook. Meanwhile, Mu Ki finally located Judge Lee, who had presided over Im Soon's trial. When the former judge met Yoon Du, he expressed regret for sentencing Im Soon, who was innocent. He explained that he had been compelled to do so because he had to seek treatment for his wife's illness with the help of MC Group. Even though Ji Cook had managed the issue of Wan Jun well, Chiul He no longer trusted him to be his successor. He began preparing Wan Su, who had been underestimated before, to become the next CEO of MC Group. Ji Cook rejected this proposal, thinking that Wan Su lacked the ability to manage such a large company. This difference of opinion strained the relationship between Chiul He and Ji Cook. On the other hand, Wan Su started approaching Ji Cook because he wanted her on his side. Unfortunately, Jeep Cook continued to support Wan Jun as the future leader of MC Group, explaining that she couldn't side with Wan Su because he was unpredictable, and she had to be cautious around him. Meanwhile, Suki met with Hyung Il, who had previously handled Jae Rim's death case, and asked for his assistance in uncovering the truth about the trial 15 years ago. She also expressed her suspicions about Jay Cook's involvement in Jae Rim's death. Unfortunately, Suki faced difficulty persuading Hyung Il, who had worked closely with Ji Cook for a long time, and he was unlikely to betray the top management leader. After meeting with Suki, Hyung Yul went to inform Ji Cook about Suki's inquiries into the truth behind Jae Rim's death. Ji Cook, upon hearing this, became angry and reported it to Chiul Lee. In the top management office, Ji Cook and her team began investigating various activities Suki had been involved in. They quickly uncovered everything, including Suk. He's frequent visits to Buki's news office with Yundu. One of the top members also obtained information that Yundu often visited the prison, and after hacking into his subordinate's phone, Ji Cook finally discovered that Yundu was Im Soon's biological son who had been reported missing. The next day, Yundu was suddenly arrested by the prosecutor's office on embezzlement charges. They had strong evidence against him, making it hard for him to prove his innocence. Detective O faced some bad luck too as he got transferred to the traffic division. Guang Mai and Buki had to witness their offices being ransacked by someone. Even the prosecutor's office searched Jiang Su's restaurant after his son was accused of embezzlement. Jiang Su was devastated by these events but believed that his son had been framed. Soki visited Buki's newsroom and saw the office in chaos. She felt guilty for the bad things that had happened to everyone. Meanwhile, in the shop, Ji Cook met Jiang Su and asked him to stop Yun Du's efforts to investigate Jae Rim's death. Jiang Su refused her offer, determined to support his son in uncovering the truth about Im Soon, despite Ji Cook's threats. He even kicked her out of the shop because he wanted nothing to do with someone as wicked as her. Shortly after, Silk He came to console Jiang Su, who was crying about his son's troubles, and promised to clear Yun Du of all accusations. The next day, Tai Hyung interrogated Yun Du regarding the case. On another occasion, Suki met Yundu and suggested they approach him Yul to clear Yundu's name, since the senior prosecutor was the one who decided on his detention. Afterward, she also found Buki drinking at a bar and asked him to join her in the fight for justice. Buki agreed to work with Suki again, feeling reinvigorated. 
Later, she approached Detective Oh and Wang Me to persuade them to join her cause as well. When everyone gathered in Bu Qi's newsroom, Suki presented evidence showing that Ji Cook was behind Wang Piu's sudden death. The four of them started planning a way to convince Hyung Il to clear Yundu of all charges. On another occasion, Suki met with Wan Su and persuaded him to talk to Chul He about removing Ji Cook from their family business. They felt overshadowed by Ji Cook for nearly three decades, and Wan Su, who was disappointed with Ji Cook for reducing his shares in the company, agreed to Suki's idea. Bu Kanai and Detective Oh seemed to have successfully obtained files on Hyung Il's abuse of power 15 years ago. Silky, who was aware of this, met with Hyung Il and presented various cases of his abuse of power. She also mentioned that she had evidence of Ji Cook's involvement in Wang Pio's recent death. Hyung Il couldn't deny the information Silky had gathered, and he eventually agreed to release Yundu from the embezzlement charges. Some time later, Silky was waiting for Yundu to be released outside the prosecutor's office. When Yundu saw her, he approached and kissed her in gratitude for helping him. When he got back to the shop, Zhang Su was delighted to see his son back safely. The next day, Suki and Yundu went to the top management office, surprising all the team members, including Jit Cook, who had thought Yundu had been arrested. Unexpectedly, Yundu had also reported Ji Cook for abuse of power and intimidation. Detective O arrived with an arrest warrant for the top management leader. On the way to the police station, Ji Cook became angry with Hyung Il, who couldn't be reached, suspecting that the senior prosecutor, who had always worked with her, was involved in the arrest scenario. After Ji Cook's arrest, Chul Di asked one of the top management members named Yoon Sung Woon to provide all the proposals from the MC group and prohibited him from assisting Ji Cook. Unfortunately, Sang Won and other top team members' loyalty to Ji Cook was so strong that they tried to free her. In a restaurant, Hyung Il received a lunch invitation from Yoon Du and Suki and promised to release Im Soon from prison soon. That evening, Yoon Du invited Suki to dinner and she stayed at his house, so he tidied up his room to make her comfortable. A few days later, the top management team started to take Lee somewhere so the judge couldn't testify for Im Soon's retrial. Sang Won also met with Hyung Il to persuade the senior prosecutor to come back to their side. With various tactics used by the top management team, Ji Cook was finally released and met with Hyung Il, who asked her to clear his name of all past cases because he had been appointed as a candidate for attorney general. On the other hand, Suki and the others were shocked to learn about Ji Cook's release, especially since it disrupted their plans. Because of this, Yoon Du quickly held a press conference to request a retrial for the Im Soon case from 15 years ago. Chul Di appeared frustrated at the press conference because he didn't want the investigation into his first wife's death reopened. To cover up this issue, Ji Cook had to sacrifice Hyung Il by creating news about various scandals the senior prosecutor had committed, diverting public attention from the Im Soon case to Hyung Il's problems. Unfortunately, the destruction of his career after the news made Hyung Il decide to do the unthinkable in his car. The sad news of Hyung Il's death shocked Yoon Du and the others, especially now that Chil Di was increasingly afraid to oppose Ji Cook, because he didn't want to end up like the senior prosecutor. A few days later, Wan Su approached Ji Cook for support, but she chose to back Wan Jun, whom she believed was more capable. During their conversation, Wan Su recalled a long buried family secret about his grandfather's illegitimate child, whom he once wanted Ji Cook to get rid of. Ji Cook had forgotten about this secret for 30 years, but now she began to search for Wang Pyo's biological child. On another occasion, Ji Cook called Chong to inquire about the whereabouts of Wang Pyo's illegitimate child. During the conversation, she revealed that Soki was Wang Pyo's daughter. This revelation shocked Chong, who had no idea that Ji Cook was aware of this fact. Ji Cook then went to see Chiu Di, armed with DNA test evidence proving that Soki was Wang Pyo's daughter. Chiu Di was extremely surprised to learn that Soki, whom he had thought of as his daughter, was actually his half sister. The news was so overwhelming that Chiu He fainted due to his heart condition. Upon hearing about Chiu He's hospitalization, Suki rushed to visit her father. Young Seo blamed Suki for her husband's condition, believing that the reopening of Jay Rim's death case had burdened him. However, Suki, who had met with Ji Cook, suspected that her father's illness was a result of the pressure from top management's leader, who was pushing for Wan Jun to become the next CEO of MC Group. In the top management office, Ji Cook instructed her team to keep the fact that Suki was Wang Pyo's daughter a secret, because she didn't want Suki to become the leader of MC Group. 
she hurried Wan Chun's appointment as the next leader. Silk Yi's determination wavered when she thought about her father's condition, but Yundu encouraged her, and she regained her resolve not to disappoint her colleagues, especially since they had gathered a lot of evidence related to the case from 15 years ago. Yundu emphasized that giving up would only make Ji Cook more powerful, and he didn't want to see more victims like Kang Yeol and Chiyoldi. The next day, Suki and Yundu met Tai Hyung, who wanted revenge on Jit Cook for ruining his career and causing his father's death. He handed over confidential case files from 15 years ago to Yundu. After studying Im Soon's case records and matching the time of death with surveillance camera footage, they narrowed down the suspects to three people Wan Su, Wan Jun, and Young Seo. After the meeting, they sought Su Jin's help in reporting Jit Cook for deceiving her into marrying Wan Jun in the past. Meanwhile, Ji Cook met with the judge handling Im Soon's case to request her help in rejecting Yoon Du's rich rail request. The next day, to ensure Wan Jun's appointment went smoothly, Ji Cook instructed her team to double-check all preparations and block anyone who might disrupt the proceedings. Soki encouraged Yoon Du not to give up and to uncover the truth about her mother's case, which MC Group had slandered. Yoon Du received a call from Ji Cook, inviting him to meet and discuss canceling the retrial but he firmly refused and was unafraid to oppose her. Some time later, Chong met Yundu and Suki at Jiang Su's shop to reveal the truth about Wang Pio, who turned out to be Suk, his biological father. Chong explained that when Wang Pio disclosed this to Jerim, Wang Pio's first wife couldn't accept the affair, leading to her depression. Soon after, Wang Pio had a suspicious accident that seemed orchestrated by Ju Kuk and Chiuli, because they didn't want Suki to inherit shares in the company. When Suki inquired about her biological mother, Chong informed her that her biological mother had passed away during childbirth, and J Rim had raised her since then. Learning this truth devastated Suki, and Yundu tried to comfort her during her emotional turmoil. The next day, Suki regained her determination to claim her shares as Wang Pio's daughter and discussed her plans with Yundu. Unfortunately, Ji Cook had the results of Suk He's DNA test in her possession. Suki confronted Ji Cook to reveal that she knew the truth about her being Wang Pio's daughter. During a family meal, Suki took the main seat and announced her status as Wang Pio's biological daughter. She asked Chong to stay with her as a personal servant and decided to bring Neri and Siu Jin back to live with her. Young Siu and her two sons were shocked by this revelation. On the other hand, Ji Cook later met with Young Siu and her two sons, insisting that Wang Jun's appointment as CEO of MC Group would proceed as planned despite Suki being Wang Pio's daughter. Wang Su approached Ji Cook with a proposal to evenly distribute MC Group shares among Suki himself and his younger brother in exchange for his support for Wang Jun's leadership once he obtained his 30% share. Ji Cook rejected the offer and taunted Wang Su about his involvement in J Rim's death 15 years ago. Turning back to the past on the day of J Rim's death, Wang Jun was the first to arrive at her villa for a chat. He felt relieved when J Rim promised to keep his secret personality hidden. Shortly after, Young Seo also showed up, asking J Rim for a divorce from Chiyoldi. However, J Rim firmly refused and sent Young Seo away. This rejection left J Rim upset, and she started painting to express her emotions. Wan Jun, carrying a book and a bottle of red wine, came to visit her. He poured her some wine and pleaded with J Rim to agree to the divorce, explaining that he loved his mother and his younger brother which is why he wanted her to separate from his father. Still angry from her earlier encounter with young Seo, J Rim lashed out at him, and their argument escalated until Wan Jun lost control and attacked her with a kitchen knife, resulting in her death. Without remorse, Wan Su arrived and left J Rim's lifeless body in a pool of blood on the floor. When Chil He later arrived and discovered his wife's condition, he called Ji Cook to handle the crime scene, suspecting that a member of the MC group family was responsible. Back to the present, Ji Cook was in a meeting with the top team, ensuring the preparations for Wan Jun's appointment were going smoothly. In Gu Qi's news office, Su Qi and the others discussed how to make the suspects admit their actions. Su Qi returned home and questioned Young Seo about her actions on the day of J Rim's death. From Young Seo's answers, Su Qi concluded that her stepmother couldn't have committed the crime. She then called Wan Su, who shockingly confessed to being the murderer, but Su Qi thought he was joking given his past kindness towards her. When she talked to Wan Jun, he denied having any motive to kill J Rim, considering her a good woman who had kept his cross-dressing secret. 
An evening, Wan Su visited Jiang Su's shop to invite Yun Du for a drink. He asked Yun Du about his feelings after being separated from Im Soon for 15 years, who had been in prison. Wan Su encouraged Yun Du to live a happier life before saying goodbye. The following day, So Ki and Yun Du discussed the Jae murder case. So Ki couldn't believe that Wan Su had confessed to the crime, considering he had always been kind to her. Yun Du reminded her to stay rational and not let emotions cloud her judgment as they tried to uncover the real culprit. Meanwhile, Wan Jun and Young Seo arrived at the MC group office for Wan Jun's inauguration as the new leader. Just before the meeting results could be ratified, So Ki and Yun Du showed up with Bok Soon a highly respected business figure. Bok Soon presented Silk He's DNA test results, given to her by the late Wang Pio. Yun Du then declared in front of the board members that Silk He was Wang Pio's legitimate daughter, entitled to 25% of NC Group's shares, putting a halt to Wang Jun's inauguration. However, Ji Cook wasn't ready to give up and tried to buy shares from the board members to ensure Wang Jun had a larger share than Silk Another day, the police suddenly arrive at the MC Group family's home to arrest Young Seo for stealing a painting by Jae Rim and claiming it as her own. Wan Jun was also arrested for tax evasion related to his paper company. After their arrests, Wan Su asked So Ki when his turn would come, and Yoon Du sat down with him, urging him to tell them the truth about what happened on the day of Jae Rim's death. Calmly, Wan Su asked Yoon Du and So Ki to meet with Tae Hyung because he had sent something to the prosecutor. When meeting with Taehyung, the prosecutor presented a recording made by Wansu, where he confessed to his actions and revealed that he did it to make his mother happy. This evidence made it easy for the police to arrest Wansu. Even though they had identified Jae Rim's murderer, Suki was determined to make Ji Cook pay for all the crimes committed by the top leader. Some time later, Detective O oh and the police arrived at the MC Group family's residence to arrest Wansu. In a surprising turn of events, Wansu chose to do the unthinkable. Silky was deeply shocked by Wan Su's death, and Yoon Du immediately comforted her as she grappled with the loss of a family member. Chi Cook, upon hearing of Wan Su's death, appeared shocked as well. She gathered her team and thanked them for their dedication and hard work. At the meeting, Ji Cook visited Yoon Du at Jiang Su's shop to congratulate him on dismantling her leadership era. She handed Yoon Du an ID badge, symbolizing his new role as the top leader. On another day, Tang Hyung contacted Yoon Du and So Ki to inform them that Ji Cook had suddenly disappeared, taking all the evidence from the events of 15 years ago with her. This could complicate the reopening of the trial and Im Soon's release. The three of them left Tai Hyung's office to search for Ji Cook. She later confidently arrived for the investigation, believing that none of the accusations against her could be proven in court. However, during the trial, the judge sentenced her to only four years in prison, leaving So Ki disappointed. Several days later, the process for Im Soon's retrial began, fulfilling Yoon Du's dream of becoming his mother's lawyer and clearing her name of all charges. Yoon Du also took charge of TOP management with a new perspective, deciding not to sacrifice innocent people for the sake of the company's reputation. That evening, So Ki invited all her colleagues who had supported and helped her throughout the ordeal, including Neri and Siu Jin, to return and live with her. On another occasion, she visited Childi, who remained in a coma to say her goodbyes before leaving for further studies in America. In the series final, Yoon Du receives a surprise call from Detective Oh, who pretends to need his help with a problem. When Yoon Du arrives at the police station, he's shocked to find So Ki, who has come back to Korea after her unsuccessful bar exam attempt in America. She plans to start a law firm in Korea, and this reunion rekindles their romantic relationship. The moral lesson from the story is, family gatherings can have unexpected twists and turns. You might discover you're related to half the people in the room, and they could all be caught up in a complex soap opera of crime and power struggles.